Oh, hello. I didn't see that camera and tripod set up there. Yes, I'm back with a brand new game and a brand new tie. The budget for this channel has been decimated. Street Boys on the PS2 is one of those repetitive beat-em-up games that's a must-have for any avid fan of carpal tunnel syndrome who loves mindlessly bashing buttons for hours on end until their wrists wither away almost as fast as their life prospects. Naturally, I bought it. This ridiculously named Pearl of Horse Manure was made by Tamsoft and published in Europe by 505 Game Street. Or is that SOS Game Street because all of their careers needed saving after they published Street Boys? A company called D3 committed the same sin by producing this in Japan. Over there, Street Boys is part of a series of games called the Simple 2000 series. Basically, they're all budget games, so no purple ties at the Simple 2000 office. The number 2000 was because of the cost of the games, which costed around 2000 Japanese yen at the time, which was approximately 2000 yen more than what Street Boys was worth. But don't let the simple part of the name fool you. Street Boys is actually worse than simple. Well, was this game Street Boys or cross the street and avoid this, boys, girls, men's, women's and everybody's? Let's stick the disc in and find out. Believe it or not, tipping my PS2 upside down with blue PS2 discs works for me when they otherwise wouldn't. That's how we hack things here on the streets. I'm part of Anonymous in it. Start game. Game is started. I've never known a game to give an explanation more complicated than the thing it was trying to explain. I didn't think the two words start and game could be explained more clearly, but obviously I was wrong. The options shake as if it's the most nerve wracking decision you'll ever make in your life. Do you want stereo or mono? I don't know, I don't know! The options menu also shows the controls. Yes, shows. Oh no, you can't change them. Why is it under options then? What kind of option is it when you have no option but to use the controls they give you? That's like a waiter at a restaurant saying, here are your drinks options. Um, do you have any other drink? No, just tap water. So which option, bitch? So now we're finished with the options, let's come out and... Don't set up. Well that's a first for me. Have you ever had a video game that threatened you if you tried to set it up? Maybe it's a warning from the programmer about things to come. Well, despite putting my life in danger, we're going to play on anyway. Because I've paid for it now and I need a new video. If you don't press anything on the press start screen, maybe because there was no additional message to explain what press start means, this message comes up. Okay, legend of ignition switch. I can only assume R. Kelly was one of the coders of Street Boys and put this in. Well, it is the freaking weekend baby, and I am about to have me some fun. By turning this shit off and playing Sonic Mania. Here's the gist of the story. Don't get too excited, it's shit. It's the 99th year Ott's the Shoah era. Ott? Shouldn't that say of? Are you telling me that in the very first line in the game there is a typo? Who checked this? By now, most of the world is ruled by gangs of thugs. This guy is Kiyoki, the leader of the most powerful gang of all, the Hell Black Heaven Gang. Sounds like they had a brainstorm down at the Marilyn Manson fan club. By now, the gang has become as powerful as a nation. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that guy. He is now carrying out a terrible plan. A terrible plan, eh? So does the plan have terrible consequences or is it just badly thought out? The blueprint to build this new children's home is terrible. That's where Jin, architectural genius, comes in to save the day in a most exciting and Oh no, wait, he wants to forcefully take over the country. 
Yeah, that's a bit terrible, isn't it? He pathetically calls his plan the Fug Capture Project, a name which must have had about as much thought put into it as the names Street Boys and Hell Black Heaven Gang. I'll teach you the basic game controls. Who's talking to me here? The people on this street all look like Postman Pat's escaped prison. That wasn't the hole you were supposed to post that letter through, was it, Pat? What do you have to say for yourself? No! My social skills are lacklustre at best, but I think that's an inappropriate way to initiate a conversation. Yeah, that's how we talk to people in street, boys. You got something to say? Here, speak now, I've lifted you by the throat and you're desperately struggling for oxygen. This is the original how not to talk to short people meme. Street boys did it first. To get a tough guy look, press the R3 button. Yeah, that will help you win fights, won't it? Mm, it works. Some of the bosses will also not want to miss the opportunity to be tough guys. Yeah, you don't want to miss golden opportunities like that. You can start a stare down. If you win, you can make your opponent faint. But if you lose, you'll sustain some damage. That's right, Jin is so aesthetically grotesque that people feel physical pain just by looking at him. I thought I was the only one with that superpower. That's all, I'm done. Yeah, so am I. With this game! Some kid then approaches and wants a fight to decide who's number one. I'm coming! Whoops, I must have pressed L3 by mistake and activated my sex face. Are you Jin, number one in town? Jim replies, yeah, so? What the fuck do you want? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I mean, it's rated 16 plus, but still, seemed a little uncalled for. What the fuck do you want, police? Number one's a busy boy. Ah, the discrimination office. The place to be if you like a bit of discrimination in your spare time. Fancy dabbling in a bit of casual racism? Well, get down to the discrimination office and acquire all the documentation you need. Does an employee at work have a disability? Well, come down to the discrimination office and get the permission papers you need to point and laugh at them. Be warned though, on occasion they may not let you in purely because they don't like the look of you. I can't think why. Jin is thrown in jail and meets Ginji, or is that Jinji, after the discrimination office has had a pop at him. He also looks like he has a cockroach sucking on his scalp. Those bastards arrested you, right? Goki, the leader of the... Hang on! Who the hell's Goki? The cutscene said his name was Kiyoki. A country dominated by a thug. That would be disastrous. Insert your own political joke there. This is Sorak space, not partisan space. I've got to get out of here. I've tried to force it many times, but it no use. It no use? Just like your grasp of the English language. And yeah, that's the problem with prisons. They don't let you get out when you want, do they? If we try together, maybe we can manage to do something. Or are you just going to hang around here? Hmm, you're a guy with interesting ideas. Yeah, he's thinking right outside the box, isn't he? Wanna escape prison if you can? You've got interesting ideas. I wish I was that fucking intuitive. If you were in prison for that haircut, mate, justice was served. They somehow managed to blow the cell doors open, but the perspective is from the outside, so you have no explanation as to how they got free so easily. What happened to tried force but it no use, Captain Caveman? Wait, let me see that again. So he lifts his glasses up like a ginger magneto and his stick is sticking out of the door before they escape. His stick is sticking out of the door. With these handcuffs on, you can't do anything. He just blew open a cell door by standing and looking at it. But no, apparently he's powerless. Oh, and he can beat up hundreds of guards using only his feet. Utterly powerless. So the boys and girls in Street Boys seem to be modelled around Japanese high school students from the 80s. The PAL box art doesn't quite portray this imagery though, does it? I was half expecting a game to be centred around three rowdy chavs called Kev, Bev and Trev, armed with tracksuits, gold chains and sick tunes, fighting under the rule of great dictator Ali G, all for the prestigious honour of postcode supremacy. Surprisingly, it turns out it's a bit different to that. What does the back cover say? Shin is a... Hang on, Shin? I thought he was called Jin. Shin is a tough looking street boy, trapped in a prison for no apparent reason. Oh, never mind, eh? Shin will take out anyone and anything. We've all been there. A variety of weapons are at his disposal. Get money from thugs you defeat and use them to buy new weapons. Not the money, the thugs. Choose between four street boys. Each one will help you with a devastating special attacks. 
Who needs proofreaders when you've got back covers like that? When you whack enemies, words like crash flash up on your screen like 1960s Batman. They then lie down for a few moments to take a breather and reflect on the events of the past 5 seconds, get back up again, and you knock them back down again. I believe there was a song about that once. Look at this now! I try to go through the door, but unless I go super slow, it brings me straight back. Gene can comically lift enemies up and use them as weapons, miraculously keeping his grip, even on ones that are double his size, including Blakey from on the buses. I hate you, Ginji! So after two and a half decades of trial and error to try and get through this stage, I discover when you use a switch it shuts the doors open by the previous switch. The switch that opens the door you need is switch number three. So unless you press three and no others, and walk all the way to the one door you need opens, you'll be stuck here forever. I'll give you a mini spoiler alert now. This is the hardest bit in the whole game. And it's the very first level. I nearly gave up. And the navigation is a joke. The map is an insult. It's like taking an oblivious road trip and relying on a 43rd rate satna from a pound shop that's the size of a 5 pence coin. The enemy's stench is stronger than usual. That's right, the map in the top right of the screen is so bad that you have to rely on either the enemy's flatulence or the inevitable BO that's gradually built up after they've waited days for us to find them. So we can choose we made it or let's split up. Let's try split up then. Oh, except it doesn't split you up at all. It just stops you going through the door. Both of you, together. As in, not split up. The first boss is a gigantic guard. Again, no explanations as to why there are suddenly superhumans roaming about the place. Let's try out this tough guy look then. So we fled the discrimination office and met back with Shoe Sucky, whose name may give us an insight into his hobbies. Maybe those bastards have got their hands on our school. Why do you keep calling them bastards? In the shopping district, which ain't much of a district because there's only a poultry free shops, you can buy weapons, items and a new look with your zenny. We've got new hair dyes, have a look. Okay, let's try one out. It looks good, does it? Why are you laughing then? It looks bloody stupid, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Thanks for that. I'll be laughing when I come back later and throw a paving stone through your window. Now for the creatively named street block stage. Ho, ho, ho. He, he, he. Thank God for the English subtitles. We would have lost track of the story otherwise. I'm calling this enemy the Drunk Uncle, as his main attack is a dance move that's an obesity-powered mid-pace shuffle forward. How is this even causing damage, besides being an embarrassment at a family wedding? The next boss is a fatter version of UK politician Douglas Carswell, whose real name is Yushio. If you struggle with the pronunciation, imagine saying Yu-Gi-Oh after having anaesthetic injected into your gob. Have you ever seen someone's jaw as a separate entity to the top half of their head? Of course you have, so seeing Yushio with a mouth that stretches across his entire face shouldn't be strange to you at all. His toes are inexplicably all the same length, but that doesn't stop him wearing his favourite wooden flip-flops that elevate him further from the ground, presumably because he's a little insecure about his height. Yushio has spiky balls for hands, and he therefore came to the conclusion after a couple of goes that wanking wasn't worth it. It's the equivalent of putting his dick through a pencil sharpener. How does he put those giant clothes on in the morning? In the words of Jin, this guy makes stomach churn. Not necessarily his, just stomach. Bad fug. Hey you, what are you staring at? Oh, he is a bad boy, isn't he? Common fug, or as royalty would say, a working class man. In the whole of the Hell Black Heaven gang, there is only one female chief. Sounds like the discrimination office has had a busy week. Her weapons are a couple of yo-yos. It's not often I hear them called that. Oh, she uses actual yo-yos. That's bound to have its ups and downs. The game describes this singular flapping lady as ladies. Whoa, you don't look too happy. You look like you've seen better days yourself, love. Next up, the high school. Oh no, there's no kids here. Everyone in the world of street boys outside the age range of 20 to 35 has been exterminated. There are thugs shooting fire outside the toilets. Nothing too odd here, it's a typical scene outside a public toilet on a Saturday night after a load of thugs have eaten a dodgy curry. 
except the fire is shooting out of their hands as opposed to their ripped anus. You found the gym key. With this, you can open the door to the gym. Gym key opens gym. I'm so glad the manual has a note section in it. Talking of the manual, let's have a little look, shall we? You can't say no, it's part of the script. The manual says if you hit your partner too much, they get angry. That's true, I saw it on Jeremy Cole. So of course I beat this guy down to see the partner anger in all its glory, but they're pathetic and do nothing in return, like an impotent hulk telling porkies. It looks like the only one getting angry is Jim, as he keeps shouting, damn it. I'm smacking you, react, damn it. Main character's face. The main character's face. Partner's face. Your current companion's face. Main character's energy. The main character's energy is showed here. When no energy is left, the game over screen will display. Hey, leave the dissing of the play to me, alright? Shit, to open this small door, A, you need a key. Call me a hypocrite, but is all this fucking swearing necessary? And it's always shit and bastards as well. Be more creative. Call them cockwombles. Call them sack gagging spunk riders. Call them crotch sniffing dick nuggets. Don't keep calling them bastards every two minutes. A, you need a key? And how is that door small? Why even bring up the size of the door? Especially as it's the biggest door in the entire game. Now we've entered Chinatown, which contains traditional Chinese venues like Tony's Disco. And empty. You bet it's empty. Chinese dress fog. I'm not enjoying this. That makes two of us, pal. In our world, you are a well-respected celebrity. Well, Sorak Space is a worldwide brand, so that is to be expected. I want you to tell me where those bastards hideout is. Behind the discrimination office's door that must not be opened are the stairs that take you down. You would have thought someone would have had a peek through that door with that label on it, rather than just forever adhering to the sign without any question. The only way to get in there is to get captured again. Jin, what's the matter? You know the discrimination office is in the hands of those bastards, don't you? Enough with the bastards! Then an escaped convict. Okay. Don't let him escape this time. The only way to get in there is to get captured. Okay. Take of a weapon. What? We can choose quiet court or I won't go. Guess I'd better get quiet court. So they've put me in the same cell with the door still blown off, have they? With these handcuffs on, you can't do anything. Yeah, we've been over this! Oh yeah, and don't bother to handcuff her. That's a great idea. What are you afraid of? Being accused of discrimination or something? There's a sign that says look. Well, I'm looking at it. Why is this utter irrelevance part of the game? Someone is pressing the panel button. Yes, that would be me, wouldn't it? In GTA, when you get in a car, it doesn't give you the message, someone is getting in a car. The Nishirin Discrimination Office Torture Room. Sounds like a room I'd rather avoid, to be honest. Just, just going by instinct here. Hi, hi, you made it. And you look like a kangaroo on crack. Since those bastards change hideout very so often, I haven't the slightest idea where they are now. But I've heard that very soon they're going to get together in an abandoned factory. If you go down there, you should be able to find Kiyoki. Oh, you've settled on that name now, have you? Those bastards are causing trouble here too. No, I'm sorry. Does the word enemy in Japanese translate to bastard or something? It's beyond ridiculous now. You have to fight Joe, who is in control of a huge digger. My partner Mayuki died instantly. Oh, what a surprise, your pathetic little yo-yo is no match for a great big digger. One good thing is a variety of weapons you can use. There are loads of things lying around that you can pick up and whack people with, or throw at distant enemies. Very distant enemies. Let's hope the world of Street Boys uses real life physics. Oh no, it don't. With all of these weapons, I can't help myself but make a load of Arnold Schwarzenegger style puns. Go to bed. I think you better leave. I'm Batman. You better believe it. You're extinguished. I'm setting the benchmark. Just throwing out the trash. It's been delightful. Take some iron, it's good for you. It's great to meet you. It must be a sign. Table for one. Take a seat. You may find this shocking. Let's bounce. 
Looks like you're too tired. Say goodbye. I hope you're by curious. It's concluded. I'll come join this with your ass. It's unconditional. When I'm done with you, your face will be concave. The final boss is, you guessed it, Kiyoki. Or Goki, depending on whatever the game feels like at the moment. He's created the ultimate, yet quite frankly underwhelming, Fug Machine. Which apparently is using all of the Fug power from the Fugs he captured in the Discrimination Office. The concept of using Fug power to create and run machinery surprisingly remains unexplained. And to cap this game of bad names off, he's called this machine Godfather. Hey, I just thought, that would make a great name for a Mafia movie, wouldn't it? The boss is easier to beat than the previous bosses in the game, such as walking through standard doors, and the cutscene showing Kiyoki's defeat has sound effects in the background that sound like they recorded me accidentally knocking things over after a night out and sneaking back into the house half cut. Peace has finally returned to our town. Yes, but we haven't reached our goal yet. What do you mean? Our power must be known to everybody. No, it doesn't. Next time we'll do it our way. And we will be the ones to conquer country. Oh, Shin. How could you? Where did it all go wrong? It was the haircut, wasn't it? What a plot twist. A plot twist so bad I twisted both my ankles just watching it. Overall, even with the threat of nuclear war, I'd rather go and live in the States where this thing was never released. To put it 2,000 times more simply, it's repetitive from the gameplay right down to the script. What bastard proofread this game? What bastard thought this was a good front cover? What bastard thought Street Boys was a good name? Bastards. It's okay, I didn't want this video monetized anyway. I give this game a saw rating of D3 out of 505. D being equal to negative infinity. I've been Sorax, watch this space. You bastards. Well, Mr. Gingy, um, we've got your job application here, and um, I'm unafraid to tell you that you've been unsuccessful. Um, purely because you're ginger, uh, we don't have your kind here, and um, that haircut is ridiculous. Um, I'm trying to run a business here. Um, so stop wasting my time walking in here all ginger and complaining that I grabbed you by the throat while you answered your interview questions. What's that? Lawsuit? <laughs> I don't think so. I popped down to the discrimination office earlier and I got all the necessaries. So um, I can say whatever I like. And if you bastards at home don't like, subscribe and share this video, there will be trouble.